the news at 6. NBC 6 HD. Good evening. Off the top at 6. Brr. This bitter cold blast is not going anywhere. And some parts of South Florida will be dipping into the 30s tonight. Chief Meteorologist John Morales is braving the cold and joins us outside for his first forecast. John? Well, it's, you know, it's worth being outside to experience this. This could be potentially a historical cold snap here in South Florida, not because of the severity of it, but because of the length of it. Just how many days in a row we're going to have of this stuff, the cold stuff down here in South Florida. Now, we've got temperatures right now in the 50s all across the metro area. We're talking about 59 degrees in Miami and 58 in Fort Lauderdale. Some of the colder spots right now include Pompano Beach at 56 degrees. Now, this morning we had lows into the mid 40s. The low in Miami was 44. The low in Fort Lauderdale was 43. And we're expecting uh, temperatures over the next couple of days to, well, dip even colder. As a matter of fact, they'll look like this in many locations by tomorrow night. They'll be in the 30s uh, in uh, most spots. And you saw those temperatures in Weston this morning were in the upper 30s. So for the next several days, uh, we're talking about temperatures near or below 40 degrees for the next two nights and then mid 40s for Thursday, a venerable heat wave in my forecast for Friday with a low temperature of 56. We might very well set a record, by the way, uh, for tomorrow night as Wednesday morning we'll wake up with 38 degrees. So here's the way the night is shaping up. We're talking about temperatures dropping uh, rather rapidly into the mid 40s by midnight and to about 40 by late tonight, waking up tomorrow, time you go to school or to work at about 44 degrees, 54 at noon, only 58 degrees for the high for the entire day tomorrow. A very, very chilly day indeed for South Florida. I'll be back with more details in just a little bit, Jackie. John, thanks. Developing news right now. Police say a man set his mother on fire, killing her and injuring his father in Northwest Miami-Dade. That's where we find Amara Sohn live on the scene with the latest on the investigation. Amara? Jackie, this is such a heart-wrenching story when you hear that this family did everything together. They just celebrated the holidays as a seemingly happy family. And then you have this, an altercation between the father and the son just after uh, 12 o'clock this afternoon. It happened inside a home behind me here on Northwest 147th Street and 3rd Avenue. Police say the 24-year-old son by the name of Clifford McLean Jr., as you mentioned, set his mother on fire, killing her, 47-year-old Cutie Lynn McLean. Now, Miami-Dade police say the suspect then beat up his father, then took off in his mother's Nissan. Coincidentally, there was a home invasion just a few blocks away from the scene where a North Miami public works truck was stolen. And it doesn't stop there. The driver of that truck was involved in at least three hit and run accidents in Miramar, another in Pembroke Pines. When police caught up with the man in Pembroke Pines, they say he was violent. They were forced to fire. Now authorities believe uh, this man, or I'm sorry, the multiple incidents, I should say, may be related to Clifford McLean Jr. Of course, that is still under investigation. But here's what relatives on this murder scene in North Miami had to say about all this. I don't think my nephew was angry. My nephew is not angry because he loved his mom dearly. You wouldn't argue your mom and say, I love you, mommy. Something happened to my nephew. Somewhere along the line, something medically wrong with, go wrong with what we don't know. And we just have to find out what we don't know. We lost a good person. You know, she was a good woman. You know, family ordained. And it's a tragedy happened with her son. Once again, police have yet to connect all the dots from all the incidents that happened first here in North Miami, then in Miramar and where it all ended in Pembroke Pines. The hit and run suspect, as we mentioned, was shot earlier today. He is now in critical condition, taken to Memorial Regional Hospital. We have not been able to confirm the hit and run suspect's identity. Of course, this is uh, developing news and we will keep you posted on any updates. That's the very latest from North Miami. Amara Sohn, NBC6. Amra, thank you. Ousted Miami Commissioner Michelle Spence Jones is taking on Governor Charlie Crist in court, and her supporters are standing by her side. Jeff Burnside is live outside the courthouse in downtown Miami with the latest on the commission controversy. Jeff? Well, this legal and political battle could make history no matter which way it goes, because according to Michelle Spence Jones' attorneys, no Florida governor has ever suspended an office holder twice. Uh, for the same criminal allegations, and that is the key to the injunction filed late today to prevent the governor from doing exactly that. 
The news conference doubled as a choreographed campaign rally as she is vowing to win a special election to fill the same seat from which she was suspended late last year. Complete with new campaign slogan, right a wrong, Spence Jones is tapping into the outrage of her supporters after she was suspended by the governor following charges that she diverted tens of thousands of dollars from a community redevelopment fund to businesses associated with her family and friends. She not only denies the allegation, but she's making them a campaign of victimization. The Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the state of Florida, and the Citizens' Cities Charter protects the citizens' right to vote. It's the voters' choice, not Charlie Chris. She has brought in heavy legal firepower, who vowed to test the governor's legal authority to suspend someone twice for the same criminal allegations. The governor, in speaking out in contravention to that pr presumption of innocence, misspoke. We think he made a mistake. We think this lawsuit will help Governor Christ recognize that his duty is to the people, to the Constitution that gives voice to the people on Election Day. And the way he explains it is this way. He says the provision in the law that gives the Florida governor the right to suspend someone uh, allows voters then to make a decision. If they make a decision to reelect that person after they are already aware of those criminal allegations, then they're doing so fully informed. The special election is this Tuesday, January 12th. Michelle Spence-Jones already has her entire campaign team in place from the previous election. She vows to win. Live in downtown Miami, Jeff Burns at NBC6. A popular TV show is credited with aiding in the capture of a man wanted for the murders of his family members on Thanksgiving. Paul Marriage was appointed a public defender yesterday during his first court appearance. The 35-year-old was arrested late Saturday night at a motel on Long Key. Investigators say he checked in under a false name on December 2nd, just days after the killings of his two sisters, aunt, and six-year-old niece. The motel owners called police after they saw Marriage on an episode of America's Most Wanted. His arraignment is set for February 1st. Burn victim Michael Brewer is back in the hospital. The 15-year-old was admitted to Holtz Children's Hospital Sunday in serious condition with respiratory problems. This comes less than two weeks since he was released from the burn unit at Jackson Memorial Hospital. Three teens are accused of dousing him with rubbing alcohol and setting him on fire in October. All are charged with attempted murder. The little boy from Italy who was shot in Miami on New Year's Eve is still recuperating tonight. Earlier today, he got a visit from the city's top cop and a return visit from the mayor. NBC6 reporter Steve Litz was at the hospital, and he has the story. Miami's police chief and mayor arrive at Jackson Memorial Hospital to visit a boy hit by a bullet shot into the air on New Year's Eve. And when it happened... I thought, oh my God, uh, again in Miami and again a tourist and again uh, a child. A six-year-old boy, Andrea Freganese, with his parents at a Miami restaurant in the Design District. And right about midnight on Thursday, police say somebody somewhere shot into the air and the bullet came down and hit Andrea. Mayor Regalado brought toys with him to the hospital on Monday afternoon, along with Police Chief Miguel Exposito. Every year we caution people about shooting, firing their uh, guns into the air, but um, unfortunately every year we have the same problem. Just hours before the incident on Thursday afternoon, police and community leaders held a news conference pleading for people not to fire guns into the air. People and businesses in South Florida are stepping up and helping the Freganese family. Restaurants are donating food. Somebody is offering up their condominium for housing. And a Miami taxi cab company is donating transportation. Today's visit was the third for Mayor Regalado, and he does say the incident is bad publicity for Miami. The city of Miami cares, uh, Jackson cares, uh, the police department is doing whatever they can to do it. So that, you know, if you come to Miami, you will not be left alone. And that's the message that we want to send. In Miami, I'm Steve Litz, NBC6. By the way, the mayor told us the boy's health insurance will pay his medical bills, but if there's a balance, it will be covered by the state's victim advocacy program and Jackson Memorial Hospital. We'll call it ethnic profiling or call it smart. The Obama administration today put into effect tough new air travel security rules that target plane passengers from certain countries. Steve Handelsman reports discriminating between passengers based on nationality is now TSA's procedure. This was Islamabad Airport today in Pakistan, one of about 12 nations where the new rules took effect at midnight. 
Everyone bound for the U.S. is being frisked by hand, and their carry-on luggage searched by hand. Most U.S.-bound passengers are still being scanned in airports like Frankfurt, Germany today. But citizens of the 12 nations considered high risk are being frisked. The Obama administration is, in effect, profiling Secretary of Homeland Security Janet Napolitano today. And it really is derived from what is the intelligence we have, what are the threats that we are trying to curtail. Selected frisking is one of the moves ordered by President Obama, who returned today from a holiday in Hawaii to find some Republicans applauding. Hopefully we can take the politics out of this, focus on security, and the president seems to be in the right place now. Over the weekend, U.S. Central Commander General David Petraeus went to Yemen, where alleged Christmas terrorist Abdul Muttalib reportedly trained. Pro-Al-Qaeda sentiment there runs so strong, the U.S. Embassy has been closed to keep personnel safe. How can we work together and with others uh, to uh, stabilize Yemen? Today, the plan is to keep terrorists from Yemen and 11 other nations off planes headed to America. Napolitano says the frisking of some foreign nationals will continue while CIA and TSA try to figure out why an alleged terrorist whose name they knew got on a plane with a bomb. I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC News, Washington. And now that the U.S. has stepped up security for travelers entering the United States from Yemen, Nigeria, and 11 other nations, tonight at 7 on South Florida Nightly News, find out what these changes will mean for you if you fly to and from Cuba. The Orange Bowl is tomorrow night, and South Florida is getting football fever. Pretty soon. I'm Ari Azar, live at Bayfront Park, where Coolin' the Gang is rocking in old school style for Georgia Tech and Iowa fans. And would you believe the fans who are here seem impervious to cold? They have no idea that it's cold outside. And we'll prove it to you coming up. Hey, if they're from up north, I'm sure they don't even feel it. <laughs> now, in South Florida, of course, we've already talked about how long this cold snap will be. But now we got to talk about how severe it will be probably tomorrow night. I'll have the full details of the freeze that's expected in many spots. And coming up in sports, it's never a good day when your team is cleaning out their lockers early in January. Plus, a scary sight yesterday, Pat White sent to the hospital. But we have some good news on his condition. And coming up at 7, Health Connection reporter Diana Gonzalez breaks down the 10 best foods for women. Welcome to Glad TV. Thanks, Skylar. Let's go to last night's highlights. There's my.